I want to talk about the concept of instantaneous velocity. Now let me uh, step aside for a second and talk about the difference between instantaneous speed and average speed. Let's say you're on a road trip, you drive 300 miles and it takes you five hours. Your average speed is 300 miles divided by five hours or 60 miles per hour. But as you're driving, you look at the speedometer, that's not telling you average speed, it's telling you instantaneous speed and it's going to vary a lot. It averages, may average out to be 60, but it varies you know, as high as maybe 70, as low as zero if you stop. So that's the difference between instantaneous speed and average speed. Now, how do you calculate those things? Well, that's what we're going to talk about now. Let's go back to our pumpkin example. A pumpkin is catapulted into the air. Time t is in seconds. Height is in feet. And here's a, a small table of values. Now, suppose I wanted to find the instantaneous velocity at t equals 0. Well, I could get a decent approximation by coming up with the average velocity over this interval here. And it would be 200 minus 118, which is 82, divided by 1. So 82 feet per second. And I could also use the average velocity from 2 to 3. And that's 250 minus 200, 50 divided by 1. So 50 feet per second. Now these approximations are using a change in t of 1, both of them, right? 2 minus 1 is 1. Let's see what happens as we narrow this delta t value. So here I have a table that includes t equals 2, but now I have a point in the left and a point in the right that are much closer to 2, 1.9. This is a delta t value of 0.1. Now what are the average velocities? On the left I get 67.6 feet per second, and on the right I get 64.4 feet per second. These values are getting a lot closer to each other. And let me go a step further. Let me go to 1.99 and 2.01. Here, the delta t value is 0.01. And the average velocity on the left is 66.16. On the right, 65.84. To the nearest unit, these both round to 66. So you might say that the instantaneous velocity is approximately 66 feet per second. And it turns out that this is exactly how we find instantaneous velocity. As delta t approaches 0, the length of the time increment that we're at, taking average velocity is that increment goes to 0. Average velocity approaches the value of instantaneous velocity at that particular time. And that's how we calculate instantaneous velocity. It's always a limit of average velocities as delta t goes to 0. And by 2. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>